Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm gonna do another how-to video. Today, it's gonna to be on how to change the brake pads on a six piston and four piston Brembo setup. So what we're gonna do first is take the old pads out and then I'll show you how to put the new pads in. It's pretty basic stuff, but there's been a lot of questions on how do you change your pads at the track? What do you do to get them out? What tools do you use? So I figured, what better way than just make a video and show you. All right, so here are some of the tools that we're gonna need. So this is a caliper spreader. Uh, it's designed to be used with two piston, four piston. Uh, it'll work on most six piston calipers as well. If you have eight piston calipers, uh, good luck. I haven't found anything out there that's really designed specifically for six or eight piston. Um, if you have a 10 piston caliper set up, Good on you, you own a Porsche or a Bentley, and this video probably isn't for you anyway. Uh, next, you'll need some uh, brake parts lubricant, a punch, a hammer to help uh, get the pins out, and then a light is helpful, especially if uh, you're gonna be working around the back side of the caliper. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the rear caliper first. Uh, typically, just because it's easier, uh, less steps involved, not that there's much more involved with the front, but uh, there's typically only two pins, which are located here and here, that have to get knocked out. There's a spring that keeps pressure on the brake pad itself, and then we can pull that out and the pads will slide right out. Well, take my trusty punch, line it up with the pin, give it a few taps with the hammer. Sometimes it helps to push, put some pressure on the spring. You slide the pin right out. Slide the other pin out. And then your spring comes out. Now the rear spring doesn't matter which way uh, the orientation goes up or down. The front does, and I'll cover that when we get to the front. So now that we have that out, depending on how used or new your pads are, uh, it might be a little easier to get your pads out, but just applying a little bit of pressure to them uh, to free up some of the pistons. Give it a little shake. Pull the pad right out. And there you go. Simple as that. What we do next is use our caliper spreader tool to make sure that we compress the pistons back into the caliper so we can get the new thicker pads back in. Just slide it in here, press on it a few times, and you're good. Now, if you have really old beat up pads and you just wanna, uh, and you're just gonna toss them, you can use the pad that's in there to help press up against the caliper. Uh, that'll help compress the, the pistons back in, make it a little easier to put the new pads in. I'll go grab the new pads and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so now that we have the old Hawk DTC 60s out, I'm actually putting in Hawk DTC 70s because I'm getting ready to prep the car for a trip to Road America. So here are the, the rear Hawk DTC 70s and I want to cover exactly where you want to put the brake parts lubricant. So on a fixed caliper setup like the Brembo, uh, a lot of the vibration or noise uh, comes from this edge right here. Okay? So what we do is we put some lubricant on this edge and on this edge, and that typically handles any kind of noise that is made from the pad moving around. Now it's a race pad, so it's going to be a little bit noisy. So with that said, take the brake parts lubricant, just put a little bit on there. Not really gonna smear it around because that's gonna happen, oops, sorry. Not gonna smear it around, that's gonna happen naturally when I slide it in. And I just wanna be careful not to get that on the actual pad material itself. So now that I've done that, take it 
take the pad and slide it right back in there. Give it a little wiggle. Now I'm running titanium shims. This helps with uh, this helps control the heat when you're on track. Um, lots of hard stopping can cause heat to flow back into the caliper, into the brake fluid, and cause the brake fluid to boil. And it's just another preventative measure against that. So this actually goes in between the pad and the pistons on the caliper side. So I'm gonna go right in there. And I might need to put them in at the same time. There we go. And I'll go ahead and repeat the same thing with the other side. Get the titanium shim onto it. Slide that in on this side. So now that both of the pads are back in, the titanium shims are in there as well, I can go ahead and put the retaining pins back in and the spring. So I'll start with the bottom one. Get it about halfway through, and then make sure I put the spring in there before I get that the rest of the way through. I can use my hammer to give it a little tap from the back. And then I can go ahead and put the top pin through. Give that a little tap, and essentially, that's it. Now, I'm gonna go back in through the back side and use the punch to make sure that the pins are all the way through, which is gonna be blocked by the, the camera here. Right, I got that top pad, or excuse me, the top pin in. Let's see if I can do this without blocking the camera. I don't think I can for the bottom one. And that's it. You can see the pins are, you can barely see them out the front here. That's, uh, that's how you know they're all the way seated. And that's it for the rear. We'll move on to the fronts next. All right, so here we are on the front six piston calipers. Now the front's a little bit different. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, the main difference is that there is a bolt down the middle uh, in between those two top and bottom pins. And the spring, um, is different top to bottom so you really have to pay attention what direction it's in when you take it out to make sure that you're putting it back the right way now the nice thing about the front caliper pad change rotor change whatever it might be is that you can rotate the rotor the, the front the whole front assembly to make it easier to reach so a matter of grabbing and pulling And now I have easier access to all the pieces that I need to get to. Now, for the front calipers, I actually have a different punch. It's specifically designed uh, for Brembo pins. Uh, you can see it's a little beat up. I do a lot of these pad changes, but it's, uh, it's basically coned in. It's a concave uh, cone so that it doesn't flatten the tips of these pins here. So just like uh, on the rear, place that there, use the hammer, get the pins out. And 
together out. All right, now that's all that's left to do is get the center bolt out, which is held in with a half inch bolt on the back side, and then this whole pin slides out. So I'll try to do this without stepping in front of the camera. And just like that, center pin is out and I can apply some pressure to the pads. And pull them out. After some further review of the brake pads, these are the Hawk DTC 60s. They've seen three track days, two days at Mid Ohio, uh, one on the Pro Course, one on the Club Circuit, and then another day at Brainerd International Raceway on the Competition Circuit. Uh, the cracks that you see are pretty normal uh, for a race pad that's been beat up pretty badly. Um, but there's not a whole lot of pad material left. So I don't know that I'll be using these again. Uh, general rule of thumb is that when the thickness of the material, let's see if I can get that to focus. The thickness of the material is as thick as the backing plate. Uh, they wear exponentially faster. So putting these back in is a crapshoot on how much longer they'll last. So I'm gonna use these, I'm gonna put them back in and use these to spread the, uh, the pistons out and compress them back into the caliper. So what I'm doing is I'm positioning the caliper spreader tool onto the backing plate. Not necessarily the pad material, so that I can push those uh, in as far as I can. And then, since I don't care about these pads at, at this point, I'm gonna do that again in between the pad and the rotor. I'll get this to slide back out. There we go. So now that the pistons are back into the caliper themselves, I'm going to go ahead and get the Hawk 70s out apply the brake lubricant and slide them in. All right, I've got the Hawks in hand, the 70s. So I'll show you compared to the 60s. So here's the Hawk 60, here's the 70. See a considerable amount of uh, pad difference there, pad material difference. Again, getting the pad lubricant or the brake parts lubricant. That you don't get this stuff on the actual pad material. It's Hawk DTC 70, six piston pad.
titanium shim. Slide that in, move to the next one. So once we've got the pads in, you can put your center pin back through. Make sure it's nice and snug. Grab your spring. One of your pins, line those up. Slide that in. Grab your other pin. Slide that in. And tap them with the hammer, get them seated. And you're pretty much done. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the driver's side of the car on my own. I think you guys can probably figure it out here. It's the exact same process. So let me know what you think, uh, leave some comments, let me know if these kind of how-to videos are helpful, uh, tell me all of the things that I did wrong, um, let me know how ugly I am, all that good stuff. Uh, I'll look forward to it in the comments. Have a good one. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully that cleared some things up. It'll help you get the pads done at the track. Uh, we were able to knock out the front six piston and the rear four piston calipers. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I can try to clarify things if I skipped over something too quickly. Uh, also, if you're in the uh, Southeast Michigan area, check out Copper Hop Brewing Company in St. Clair Shores. Uh, fantastic beer, shameless plug. See you guys.